Welcome to Stan Island Artist Building for Faces of Evil, Four Dark Comedies. Tonight we present four plays by four playwrights on what evil is. The Encyclopedia Britannica defines evil as the absence of good. Eli Siegel, the American poet, defines it as managing collision, which you'll see a lot of tonight. We have our four playwrights here with us. Jacqueline Lurker, please give her a round of applause. Larry Schwabacher in the back. And the ever-present Helene Montaigne. We are going to go on in five minutes. Meanwhile, we have waiters and waitresses who will take your orders. We are going to go from, say, 7.30 to about 8 o'clock. And then at 8 o'clock, your orders for food will come out, if you haven't gotten it already. And then at 8.30, about 8.25, we're going to go into the second half and conclude. But feel free to join us afterwards. Please give a round of applause to our host, John Salas. You know what you're doing. Enjoy, have a great time, and we hope this is the first of many events at the Staten Island Artist Building. Five yeah. minutes. You know William and Kate, and Harry and whomever, Henry and Arthur, and Richard of the Car Park. But do you recall the most famous Edward of all? Stop! Stop! Already? Is this your first time acting? Of course not! Then why are you acting like it is? <laughs> look, if, if we're going to make this garbage day rubbish, look good, you're going to have to give 100%. If you think the script is so bad, why'd you take the job? It can't be for the money. The challenge, of course! There is nothing like the satisfaction of spinning a piece of sh straw all like this into gold. You fancy yourself a ruffle still skin, do you? Only better looking. Now, <laughs> let's take it from the top, this time channeling, channeling David the third. What he was thinking, what he was feeling. <laughs> you know William and Kate and Harry and who Stop! Uh, you're doing it all wrong. Am I? Like this. <laughs> you know William and Kate, and Harry and whomever, Henry and Arthur and Richard of the Car Park. But do you recall the most famous ever see the difference? Oh, I see the difference over there. Are they out here? Oh, shoot, the playwright. So? They always think they know everything about the script. I told her to be here at 9 p.m. I wonder what she's doing here now already. Rehearsal ends at 9. Exactly. <laughs> How lovely to meet you. So glad you could come. I absolutely love your script. <laughs> well, thank you. I, you know, I almost missed your rehearsal. Your message said 9 p.m. Oh, really? But, but I thought that sounded a little bit late to start rehearsal, so I just checked with the building. Well, a good thing you did, or else you would have missed us. Well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, so I will just stay on your way. Okay. It's just, <laughs> this is my first play, and I, I, I knew that when I visited Nottingham Castle a few years ago that I just had to tell this story. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Very exciting <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, I, I'll just observe quietly, um, unless there's something I can do to help. As a matter of fact, now that you mention it, there is something you could do. It, you know, it's hard for me to see from all angles, so perhaps you could observe from stage right. Uh, no, no, dear, your other right. Just, no, just a little further back. 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 Perfect! That's it, that's it. Now, let's take it from where we left off. While in my youth, my fair mother Isabella did cheat and perpetrate deceit against my father, the weak king, Edward II of England. She and her lover, Roger Mortimer, did run my father out of his country and then run my country into the ground. So I did plot and plan to defeat these traitors to the crown. I'm sorry. Um, but are you using the right script? Because those are not the lines. They are now. <laughs> Pardon? I just tweaked them a bit. No, improve them for, for the stage. Improved. You know things change when they get to the stage. 
You're still new at this, but you'll learn. <laughs> I, I see. It just seems that all the lines should be changed. We haven't gotten through all the lines yet, dear. If we may continue, I'm sure you'll see how much better it works. Pacing. Seeing a dagger before me and smelling something rotten in Nottingham, I did creep up the back stairs of that castle and perpetrate my crime, the deposition and execution of Mortimer. Now the throne was mine. I stole from the rich and gave to myself. I was no Robin Hood in my day, but rather doomed to become an obscure Shakespeare play. I am sorry, but what he is saying is not accurate. We don't even know if Shakespeare was the author of the Reign of Edward III or not. It doesn't matter. No one will know. Well, I know. No one cares. Pardon? We're allowed to purport our own opinion on the matter. Okay. Well, while I'm out here, there are a couple other things I would like to bring up. Such as? Why is he so old? Who? <laughs> Him. Edward III only lived to be 64. <laughs> Lady, do you need glasses? He's only 42. 41. 41. <laughs> and he can play characters in the late 30s. Mid 30s. Mid 30s. <laughs> well, is that what he's wearing? No, sweetie, it isn't. We're just rehearsing here. Is that what we're doing? Well, what will he be wearing? Tights? No. Why not? Because it's stupid. There is no reason to put my actor in tights. Well, what about his accent? What accent? As King of England, Edward III should have a British accent. No, oh, Dad, we're not setting it in England. Pardon? <laughs> Prior to the American Revolution, the colonies were ruled by Great Britain. So we worked around it. We, 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 we moved the, the action up in the 13th century. The 14th century? 14th century to 18th century. The 18th century in America, America never had kings, and the colonies didn't even exist during the reign of Edward III. You cannot do that. I will not allow it. Really? And, 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 and your contract is with that authority? What contract? Exactly. <laughs> well, at least tell me which colony you're going to set it in. I was thinking California. <laughs> <laughs> It's always warm there. This is a summer show. This way, you can wear shorts no matter what. See how we set the action. California was not one of the original 13 colonies. I know that. I know that. But it was a long time ago. No one will remember. <laughs> Why can't you just do it the way that I wrote it? <laughs> oh, I I'm sorry. I thought you were joking. Look, huh? It's not my first time in the rodeo. I know what I'm doing. Please don't take it personally. All historical adaptations take a bit of creative license. They can blockbuster hits like Braveheart, uh, Titanic, uh, The Lord of the Rings. It's Lord of the Rings is fiction. Exactly, it's all fiction. So you are willing to sacrifice historical accuracy for, for entertainment value? A few laughs, a few thrills? Of course! If you want historical accuracy, go write a textbook. Places! <laughs> My reign had begun when I already had a son. He was called the Black Prince, and though a jerk was popular with the ladies, which is often the case. He married his cousin, which was not uncommon in those days. The Black Prince's war campaigns were as black as his name as he rained down terror, and with those who died, so did chivalry. The BP as king was not to be, of that there was no question, as he died before me. The throne would be owned by my grandson, one of the legitimate ones. What is wrong with you? How long have you got? The one who are making a mockery of this man. This is not a comedy. Then why did you write it as one? <laughs>
Now, where is your stage manager? Stage manager? What do you need a stage manager for when you have me? More to the point, who needs me? I suppose you think you could do better. Well, you set the bar pretty low. If anybody's going to muck it up, it might as well be me. Anyway, for centuries, directors did not even exist the way they do today. For example, Shakespeare never needed a director. Now you're comparing yourself to William Shakespeare. Well, no. Good. His stuff was crap. <laughs> now look, I think I've endured just about enough amateur hour for one day. So why don't you just go home, relax, come back on opening night and enjoy the show. I'm sure you'll be happy with the way I fixed it. Fixed it? Why, you condescending pig. Narcissist. Egomaniac. True. Name calling? Really? I don't know why the two of you are even squabbling. Once I'm up here alone, you're both at my mercy. <laughs> and for all the direction and correction, whatever I say or do, the audience is going to think you wrote and you directed. I'm the one who should be paying attention to. Now, why don't you both go to your corners and let me run this total out straight through my way? Here, hold this. I came up with something last night. <laughs> After the reigns of King Arthur and his round table, and King Richard the Lionheart, but before King Henry VIII and Queens Elizabeth and Victoria, I ruled England. I, Edward III. I started out with good intentions, but isn't that how it always starts? I was born in 1312 to King Edward II, an ineffective and weak ruler, who was doomed to be taken advantage of by his wife, my mother. Isabella of France, and her conspirator lover Roger Mortimer, first Earl of March. My father was driven from his country, and I ascended the throne with my mother and Mortimer as regents. I was only 14, just a child, but I didn't realize it or feel like it then. I was a king. At 17, already a husband and father myself, I determined that I was old enough to hold the throne alone. With noble and filial feelings towards father and country, with the help of loyal comrades, I deposed and executed Mortimer. My mother, I spared. My attempts to lead the country seemed heinous to some, just politics to others. I fought the Scots, being ultimately unsuccessful. I aimed to claim the throne of France, spawning a 100 years war. Was I a warmonger? Or a valiant warrior? A thug? A bully? No. I was a king. A king whose reign was one of the longest, lasting over 50 years, bringing with it virtually unlimited power, responsibility, and opportunity, both good and bad. That's what happens when power comes early. As with all monarchs, I face challenges and circumstances beyond my control more than any one person should have to see or oversee in a lifetime of 64 years. The Black Death ravaged my people. My heir, the so-called Black Prince, died before me, never seeing the throne. That job was left to his own son. Don't think I felt no emotions just because I didn't show any. Kings don't have the luxury of being vulnerable. In retrospect, was I fighting for what was rightfully mine, or for what I wanted to be rightfully mine? I'm not sure I even know the question, the answer to that question. It all happens so fast, life. After you've heard my story, judge me as the man, not the myth. Or maybe, do not judge me at all. For who are we really to judge someone we don't know? and have never met. But we do, all the time. In the end, I ask not to be revered or reviled, but remembered and respected for who I was, a king. Suppose you could do it that way. No, I guess. He thinks he doesn't need either one of us anymore. 
actors. They was like, they knew everything about the script. I thought it was good. <laughs> Forgive you. What happened? <laughs> I'm not really good at this. Well, it's only been three weeks since your last confession. Uh, so. I may not have been so forthcoming in my last confession. You know what I mean? I do. As I'm sure you know, the sin of omission is also a sin to be confessed. Yes. Perhaps you can use it as the first sin you're confessing. Perhaps. Sins of omission are very serious. Almost as serious as sins themselves. I can't be true. It is true. Your faith teaches you this. So you mean to tell me every time I don't tell someone something, it's a sin? It depends on why you don't tell them. So it's confusing. Lies are confusing. Only if you forget them. <laughs> it's a joke, Father. A little confessional human to break the ice. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say something? I don't play 2048 in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. I play You're playing a game while listening to my confession. And sometimes it takes a while. A joke. A little confessional humor, you know, to help break the ice. Oh. oh, I do love 2048, though. You know, I'm actually this close to getting to 4096, which I didn't know you could get until I got to I don't have an iPhone! <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I get back to my confession? Probably. <laughs> my confession is about envy. Ah. Envy. One of the deadly sins. Far more serious than jealousy, not to say that jealousy isn't serious. Yes, yes, with envy, you see something someone has, and not only are you jealous of it, you want to take it away. Impressive. The average confessor wouldn't know that. I'll put the game down now. <laughs> you said you weren't playing. Maybe I lied. I'll confess later. <laughs> but back to you. Back to envy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what is it that you are envious of? Is it somebody's wife? No, no, nothing like that. Mm. Then let me guess again. Is it a, a car, a house? No, no. Is, is this how you hear confessions? You play guessing games? <laughs> yeah, it does get boring. <laughs> You're always hearing people talking about, I forgot to walk the dog, I cursed, I slept with my best friend's wife, and blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry to burden you. You just seem like you understand. I do. But you're sure it's not one of those things that I said, right? Because yes. the commission thing, it's, it's yes, yes, I'm sure. It's about this guy at work. Uh, he has my job. Rather, he took my job. A job I should have had. Go on. Been there for three years. I did everything they asked, everything they told me. Out of nowhere, they bring this new guy from somewhere else. They said it would be the best for the organization. <laughs> did they know you wanted the job? Of course they knew. I made it perfectly clear it was what I wanted. Well, then maybe he had more experience. No, he didn't. Our resumes are practically identical. Then maybe it was just the best decision. No, it wasn't. He has no idea what he's doing. He's an embarrassment. In what way? He just doesn't get it. It's a unique place. There's a certain way you do things, a way you deal with people. He comes from a completely different environment. I thought you said your resumes were practically identical. Well, well they are. It's just he's used to doing things a little differently. Different than you. Exactly. Well, just because someone's doing something different from you doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing something wrong. He's doing a lot of things wrong. <coughs> I see. How long has he been there? Three months. Three months is hardly a long time at all. Says you. Feels like an eternity already. Well, it sounds to me like he just got there. Maybe he's looking for a little bit of guidance. Maybe you could show him the ropes. So, so you're <laughs> suggesting I help him out? It would be the right thing to do. I don't see why I should make it any easier for him. It sounds to me like the two of you need to come to some kind of understanding. Sort of thing talking to you is a bad idea. You're not making this easy for me. I think about this is easy. I put my heart and soul into this job, and this guy comes in here and takes what's mine. I doesn't. I don't think that he sees it that way. They had to have told him that I, I was the logical choice, that I had seniority. Maybe you should talk to him about it. Establish a good working relationship. In time, the two of you could learn a lot from each other. Who knows? Maybe you could even be friends. I don't ever see that happen. You could if you could look past your envy. <laughs> you can't look past it. Do you even want to? I don't know. Then why are you here? It was the right thing to do. It is. 
which I felt that way. You do realize that it's not healthy to dwell on these things, right? You should be concerned with your own responsibilities. Is this a confession or a therapy? They are more similar than you know. Every time I see them, I just... I can't think of the words to explain it. I don't even want to look at it. When I do, I see it has what's mine, and I want it. You don't know that it's yours. No, no, that it's not mine. You need to make peace with this. Make peace with it? That's easy for you to say, when you sit. From where I sit, I'm impartial in this situation. I'm just hearing your confession. Impartial? Really? Yes, impartial. Look, I just want what's mine. Every day I try to think of a way to mess it up for you. Mm. For instance, last week I uh, photoshopped a picture of him in a compromising position. <laughs> I was going to circulate. I'm glad you didn't. I'm not. I don't know how to put this, but you do realize that in confession you actually have to be sorry for your sins, right? What about the sin of stealing, of him stealing my job. This is your confession, not his. He should be the one confessing. Be that as it may! Choice made by the higher ups. Maybe you should look for a new job. It makes it exactly easy in my line of work. May I ask what that line of work is? I'd rather not say. <laughs> is it a lie of omission? No. Your job isn't your sin. Perhaps it is. I really can't do anything to help you if you're not sorry. If you have no remorse. You should have remorse, but every time I see him, I want him to fail. Even when he just comes in and says, good morning. I want there to be some sort of terrible tragedy to say it's not a good morning. <laughs> this is very serious. It consumes me. Every single day, it's like some ugly part of me I can't excise. Well, I could help you, but my methods are somewhat Non-traditional. <laughs> Methods. For punishment. I mean penance. Wait, punishment? <laughs> I did say my methods were somewhat non-traditional. I think we're done here. Oh, I don't think we are. I'd be somewhat remiss in my responsibilities as a priest if I didn't do something to help you. Punishing me isn't helping me. And you can't help me if I'm not sorry. I could. If you could no longer see what you envy, it would be easier. So I should wear a blindfold or something. Are you familiar with Dante's Purgatorio? So much more familiar with the Inferno. Most people are. Most people are fascinated by hell. We're terrified of it. We all live our own personal little hell every day. <laughs> it hadn't occurred to me. Of course not. I wouldn't. What do you mean? You're a priest. You're basically guaranteed not to go to hell. Oh, 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 oh I don't know about that. I'm sure that I know plenty of priests that are going to hell. <laughs> I guess I never thought of that. See? We can learn a lot from each other. Yeah, you can fix my problem? Oh, sin. Sin problem. I fail to see the difference at this point. In Dante's Purgatorio, the punishment for envy is having your eyes so shut. That way you can no longer see what you envy. So you're suggesting I sew my eyes shut? Well, I'm not suggesting that. I'll do it for you. <laughs> you can't do that! I did tell you my methods were somewhat non-traditional! Sam. Father Sam. Pastor Luke. Luke. You don't deserve this job. You don't deserve absolution. What? No! <laughs> Is that all? What's it? 
machinery, Sam. Drop it, please! You must hint to our wounded employee. Yes, yes, please. Make sure his family gets full benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Plan B was phased out a year ago. Too costly. Is that wrong? <laughs> Another accident. We must revisit the possibility of upgrading our equipment. Not everything then. Chainsaw 17. That's nonsense. It's only been 20 years. Besides, that saw is running at the maximum capacity in the factory. It alone accounts for the 25% of the quarterly profit. 25%? 25%? When did that happen? When we increased the speed last month. <laughs> I got the figures fit in, they look great. I sent them to you this morning. Yeah, yes, yes, that, that is good. That's good news. You know, accidents are bound to happen a little early, you know that. I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, man! The bank officer will be here in ten minutes. And you know how important this meeting is if we're going to obtain the loan necessary to expand our operation. Don't you worry about me, little brother, okay? I got it all on the control. You know what? I'm sick and tired of you constantly being in my case. What are you wearing? For God's sake, James! Put your pants on! The bank officer will be here shortly! He can't see you this way! Oh, the door! <laughs> <laughs> just, just one minute, just one moment. Step! Please step!
brother. He's just kidding, of course. Oh, stop it, Henry. I've never thought that. <laughs> what if I told you that there was a way to reduce liability costs by increasing efficiency and decreasing waste? What do you mean, brother? Harvesting the accident parts and selling them somewhere. Are you mad? You want to sell decapitated arms and fingers for for money? Of course for money, you baby. I've done my research. And my research tells me that there's a market for the human body parts down in Latin America somewhere. Call me. A hundred dollars per finger is the only rate these days. <laughs> If we run every one of our chainsaws at optimum capacity the way we do it, so not only can we increase the overall production of the company, we can also create further income from all these human body parts that are sure to be coming our way. And we will be rolling in it. <laughs>
Wow, it really wasn't a deep sleep. Man, I hate it when people wake up from a deep sleep. Yeah, I know, you almost want to kill them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to go back to sleep, I'll make sure no one bothers you. Oh, no thank you. That's sweet of you, but I'll wait till I get home. I take a nap now, I won't be able to go to sleep when I get back to my bed.
right now. <laughs> yeah, that would too, man. It can be painful at times. That's right. You get them too, so you definitely feel this pain. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, you were going to ask me something. Oh, it just slipped my mind. <laughs> pain can make you forget anything. I've been there. Nice to know someone understands your pain. Isn't it, Julian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Uh, <laughs> listen, pal, if you remember what you wanted to tell me, I'll be around. Oh, don't let us keep you from your work. Like I said, we'll be docking soon. Thanks. <laughs> what were you going to share with that kind of deckhand? It doesn't matter now, anyway. You're a fool. I have a knife at you when you yeah. try something stupid. Like oh, that. yeah, you're going to graduate from a thief to a murderer now, real smart. Why don't you just be quiet? Why don't you move on to the next one? I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how you get your men? What do you mean? Threat them with a knife? No. She said we're stuck together now, so she knows that you know that I'm the one who's been stealing from sleeping passengers. I didn't need to know that. Listen, I'm not going to tell anybody. Then I get this knife away from you. You're going to run your sorry ass over to the first police officer you, you see and ride on me. You can't have no, 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 I promise. I won't tell a soul. You're going to be very close if this includes a cold dog. Yeah, then what? We'll see. Maybe go somewhere and have a little fun before I leave you. Are you going to rape your rap sheet? You can't rape a man. Oh, yeah? <laughs> You're going to force me to have sex? Maybe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to go to the negative? Oh, what make me negative about this situation? Do you think you have a knife on my throat? <laughs> Said I was too bony for your taste. You don't find me attractive? You're passable. Just passable? <laughs> Stop it! It's passable! It's passable! How dare you tell me I'm just passable? I'll have you know that most of the guys I have had fun with most desire. And you have a knife in the throat when you ask them? All right, all right, all right, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Evelyn. You are simply gorgeous. That's. <laughs> Attention crew members, please prepare for docking. The ferry boat is about to dock. Please make sure you take all your belongings and dispose of your trash in the appropriate receptacle. Please stay off all landings and stairwells until the boat is safely in the dock. And we'd like to thank you for riding the step, man. Uh, thank God the ride is almost over. Uh, we'll see. Like I said, I may still have further news for you. Yeah, that's right. We'll see. First chance I get, I'm gone. Is it so terrible being held hostage by a gorgeous woman who might give you pleasures beyond your wildest dreams? Please don't go there. Uh. Ah, ha. Now I have the upper hand now. Doesn't feel so good having someone wave a knife in front of your face, does it? You are a sick woman. <laughs> what kind of a woman goes around stealing from sleeping people? A woman who needs money. To get a damn job, make an honest <laughs> living for Christ's sakes. Why did that dead hand have to wake me up? Why didn't you move on to someone else? Please don't hurt me! Look, I'm not going to hurt you, I just want you to... Ah! <laughs> oh, thank goodness, you're my hero. That's all the hard work. It's just a hero of karate lessons that we heard. Do you let go of me! Please don't let her go, he's dangerous. No, man, I won't let him go. It's a good thing we had to check if the whole boat was out of here. Idiots, I'm not the one you have to worry about. She's the one stealing from sleeping passengers. Don't say anything to blame someone else. Who had the knife? You should be ashamed of yourself trying to blame this sweet woman. <laughs> She's the one you're looking for. She's the thief. Why did you have to wait? Shut up. up! There's a nice police officer over there who would love to meet you. Well, you're not going to meet me, are you? I witnessed the whole thing. You didn't you know. <laughs> 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 He's criminal times, times a lot. Well, you listen to me. Shut up! Hear me out. Do you know here? I thought you were a nice guy. Hear me out. <clears throat> She's the one you're looking for. But you forgot his knife. That's not my knife! Can I put it in my pocket? Um, better yet, I'll stick it in this pocket. Good idea. You are lucky, he's crazy! You're the crazy bitch! Huh? Huh? I don't want to hurt you! She's the one you want! She's the... <laughs> 